What's going on, people? Um, here we are, number 13 in this vinyl shit. Um, thanks for sticking with me. As I said last time, we're over halfway through. So uh, let's, let's jump right in, man. Last time we ended with Chris Christopherson. And today we're picking up with, um, I don't know, some pretty cool shit. Last Poets. Um, the title of this actual album is is up in the air. Some people call it Douglas Three. Um, some people call it the first album. But um, either way, this was a hand-me-down for my dad. Um, I don't know, pretty cool gatefold. Um, kind of an odd cover because it's it's this way, and then when you t it's this way, and then you turn it this way. I don't know, whatever. For those of you that don't know who the Black Poets are, they are a, uh, a pro-black uh, spoken word group from like the late 60s, throughout the 70s, into the 80s. But um, this, is, this record's pretty cool, man. Um, it's mostly just them going on about uh, social consciousness, politics, um, black pride, of course, over some really cool bongos. Um, nothing, nothing crazy here instrumentally, but, um, concept and, and, and vocally and, you know, just impact wise, this is a really, really important album. Um, especially some of the songs in here, wake up, wake up niggers, um, niggers are scared of revolution. Niggers are scared of revolution. Anyway, yeah, I think you should just take a listen to this. Uh, next record I'm going to show you, this is. Man, you know what this is, man. This is fucking Led Zeppelin, goddamn. This is fucking Led Zeppelin. Um, I mean, come on, man. If you don't know what this is, I mean, every every great um, or even every halfway decent <clears throat> record collection should have some uh some Zeppelin. But um, but yeah, this is the only one I have on vinyl, and of course, it's probably one of my favorite Zeppelin. Um, records. Uh, I, I'm not even gonna go through the songs on this because I mean that's a waste of time. You guys should, if you haven't heard this record, I mean get off your ass and get your shit together, man. Go go pick this up. I'm sure you can find this at any record store. This can't be. Well, I mean I don't think it's rare, but come on, man. Come on, man. This is the kind of record that appeals to um, actual music lovers. But it also appealed to like, you know, random novice music lovers, frat boys, frat girls, Becky and Cindy and them. Love this shit. They'll do the, the lame white girl dance to some Led Zeppelin. Next record I'm going to show you, this is um, Les Discrets. I I'm probably butchering the name on that. I'm not French, so whatever. Um, this is Arias. Oubliés. Don't know what the fuck that means, and I don't give a fuck. Um, anyway, this is great uh, French uh, shoegaze, post-rock. Really, really cool record. Um, really nicely done. Great cover. Um, has a nice gatefold. Uh, comes with this really nice poster that, of course, I've never hung up because I just don't, I don't hang up posters like that some people will still try to call this like shoegaze black metal but to be honest there's no black metal really present on this album it's really just a shoegaze post rock band but yeah this is this is a great record on prophecy productions um limited to 500 copies so i'm not sure if you can still find this but if you can't i'm sure you can pick up the cd if you're really interested in listening to it um it's not my favorite of the genre but it's still a pretty good album um, so yeah, so check this out if you get a chance. Hey, this is Leviathan, the Blind Wound. For those of you that don't know who Leviathan is, it's a one-man black metal band. Fucking awesome. I lucked up and I found this for like, like eight dollars at a record store. Um, shout out Criminal Records for not pricing this shit properly or just not giving a fuck enough to like jack the price up but anyway this is like limited to 500 copies um the the songs on here it's their split with um 
Sapthurin. I'm probably mispronouncing that shit too, but whatever. I'm clearly not metal enough to know how to pronounce metal names. Um, but yeah, this is a great, great album. Um, super dark, gritty, nasty, necro, grim black metal. Um, one of my favorite U.S. black metal bands. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to check out that documentary One Man Metal that uh, Vice put out, it's awesome. I may even put a link down there to it. It's Leviathan, Zaster, and Streborg. It's really awesome, man. Gives you a glimpse into how these dudes' minds work. Um, really interesting documentary. I'm not going to spend time talking about that, though. But check it out if you get a chance. Next record I'm going to show y'all motherfuckers. This is the Lix XO Experience. Um, a lot of people don't like this album. I, 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 and to be honest, I, I kind of understand it a little bit. But at the same time, um, I think they're just being really hard-headed and closed-minded. Obviously, this used to be the Alcoholics um, LA hip-hop group. Um, this was kind of their attempt at being mainstream. Um, of course, before this, they kind of had that classic, or at the time, that, that more stereotypical East Coast sound, um, kind of like Hyro-ish. Um, but they decided at this time they wanted to work with bigger producers. They changed their name to the Licks because the, the radio wouldn't play them. They changed the sound up a little bit. Um, I don't think this is that much different from their other records. I actually think this is pretty good. I actually found this at a thrift store, the same place where I found um, a couple other hip-hop albums that I mentioned. I can't remember right now, though. Um, oh, the, the Clips album. Yeah, it was like three bucks. So, I'll be on the come up, motherfuckers. I'll be on the come up, dog. But yeah, um, if you see this on vinyl, shit, man, pick it up, dude. It's a good album. Don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the haters. I'm the biggest hater you know. I'm the fucking hater extraordinaire. And I'm telling you, this is actually a good album. So give it a shot. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Tora Lundvall, Sleeping and Hiding. Um, this is a really cool album. Uh, I, I picked up on Tora Lundvall from um, his stuff he's done with Tony Wakeford from Soul Invictus. This is really interesting, dark ambient music um some of it's really pretty some of it's really just dark and a little dreary um i don't know but at sorry hold on motherfuckers texting me god damn anyway um yeah this is actually limited to 500 copies um i got really lucky and found this used but yeah this is a great record to put on in the background um when you're meditating or writing or painting or doing something equally as artistic as we all like to do or at least like to say we do to fucking pull artsy chicks this is a cool record if you see it pick it up this is one of his less rare records um even though it's limited to 500 copies i think you could probably still find it for not that much his other records and cds they go for a lot of fucking money but i think this one you could probably luck up this is one of the prize pieces of my collection. Um, man, this is the fucking Lurker of Chalice LP. Lurker Chalice is Rest from Leviathan, but it's it's different from Leviathan. Um, man, let me just show you the let me just show you the record first. So, oh man, it's, it's awesome, awesome back cover. Um, pretty spooky inserts you probably can't really see that there's just like some spooky eyes in there um inserts are pretty nice um check that out um yeah inserts are cool um pretty some pretty scary stuff y'all but here's the the, the 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 awesome part, man. Check out the vinyl. This is just, I mean, that's just stupid gorgeous. And the the vinyl's different. Each record is totally different. Like, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Um, now let me tell you about this album. For those of you that have not heard it, I'll tell you right now, dude. If you are a black metal fan. You need to hear this album. I will I will defend till my death that this is the one of the best 
black metal records that has ever come out. It embodies, to me, it embodies the feeling of black metal. It embodies the reason that I got into black metal, even though it's weird for this weird punk black guy to be into black metal. But this shit totally, totally embodies why. It, it It's desolate. It's cold. It's dark. It's depressing. It's just grim. It's gross. But it's, it's, it's just perfectly made it's unbelievably well crafted black metal this record is is just phenomenal as long as you're an open-minded individual that is kind of into this kind of music if when you put this on you feel what he wants you to feel you feel cold and just gross and alone and just like Ugh. This is not driving around music. This is go in your fucking room, put on a candle, and 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 I don't know, man. Just listen. I wish he would do another one. He says he will not, but um, I'm just glad that I got a copy of this. Seriously, this is like super rare. It's limited to 777 copies, and you can't find this. You just can't. But I found it in that bin for like $25. An absolute steal. Once again, shout out Criminal Records for either not knowing how to price stuff or pricing stuff to get rid of it because you appreciate record collectors. But either way, I'm saying it again, if you like black metal, please. This might be my favorite black metal record that I actually own. Not... CD, not album, not release, but this might be my favorite black metal record that I own. So please, pick this up if you like black metal. I'm going to go ahead and show you um, my collection of Manowar records. Manowar is another one of my favorite metal bands. In my opinion, <clears throat> Manowar are one of the few metal bands that have, like, like heavy metal bands, that have some of the best musicians. Like, they're bass player amazing their guitar player amazing their drummer incredible double kick fast as hell but yeah we're gonna start here um this is battle hymns this is one of the earlier man of war records that i got i don't feel like looking it up but i'm pretty sure this is their first album but i gotta be honest it's not that good it's a cool thing to have but it's not an amazing album um some of the songs are funny but they're the playing isn't quite there. He still has that awesome Wah! voice, but, you know, it doesn't have the songs that the other ones have. But this is still um, a good record. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Into Glory Ride. Let me tell you something right now, man. Man of War are the only motherfuckers that can get away with looking like that. I, They're the only ones. And, you know, what's funny is, dude, when I was getting into Man of War and I was buying these albums, I was like, man, these guys are so fucking cool. They're this crazy English metal band that just sings about their love of metal and da 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 da. I was so disappointed, almost to the point of crying, when I found out that these guys were from New York. Albany, New York. Dude, you can't walk around New York looking like this. What the fuck is wrong with y'all, man? Shit ain't tight. Shit ain't tight at all. They're singing about leather and steel. Just, you know, they started to come into their own with that really silly, cheesy metal stuff. But, again, the playing wasn't quite there yet. This is Son of the Hammer, again. This is, now this is kind of a, a, a turning point. This is one of their more important records, and I'll tell you why. Oh man, play on 10 right now, never gonna turn down again. It's really good, but it's not amazing. But that song, that song, is amazing. It's like a quintessential Manowar song. If you're a Manowar fan and you don't know that song, you're not a Manowar fan. You know, death to false metal, motherfucker. Next record I'm gonna show you. This is Manowar's Hail to England. Um, this is when they really started to get serious about being these incredible metal musicians. They also started to do um more ballads um on this album. The, 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 the ballads that Man of War got known for later on, these these Death of the King style ballads. Like, when you put this on, man, you, you feel like getting on a horse and just riding around chopping the heads off motherfuckers, man. You know what I'm saying? Chopping their motherfucking heads off. 
Anyway, um, yeah, this is a great record. Hail to England. Now, this record. Woo! Kings of Metal. Now, this is where they started to tear the game up. You hear me? This is when they got fucking good, man. They got real good. Some of the songs on this shit are just so amazing. Um, I'll tell you, some of my favorite tracks on this album, dude. Uh, of course, Wheels of Fire, Burn the Night, Ride Across the Sky. So good, dude. Heart of Steel. I was born with the heart of steel. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Dark Endless by Marduk. Marduk's one of my favorite um, black metal bands. Swedish black metal band. Um, fucking nasty, evil black metal. And I lucked up with this. I got this from the same weird metal bin that I got the, um, the Lurker of Chalice record. This is one of Marduk's earlier releases, so it's more death metal, just with more, um, with like black metal vocals. Um, but yeah, the songs are fucking great. Still fucking dead. Still fucking dead. The Black, of course, um, Departure from the Mortals, Within the Abyss, and the fucking, the record's awesome, dude. Look at this. Fucking Gatefold. Um, some really nice... Um, tight shit, bro. Tight shit, man. Now, of course, this is not my uh, my favorite Marduk release. That would have to be um, uh, Panzer Division Marduk, which I don't care. That record is flawless to me. Some of the fastest black metal ever played. Some of the most awful uh, anti-Christian black metal ever cre created. The fact there's a song on there called Fist Fucking God's Planet is just ridiculous. Next record I'm going to show you, um, man, this, this record is pretty important um, to the metal world, in my opinion. It, and if you don't know what this is, um, you really should. This is um, Metal Massacre number three. Um, now let me tell you about Metal Massacre, alright? These were the old Metal Blade comps that, that came out years ago. Um, when I say years ago, I'm talking like 20-something years ago, like 83, 84. Um, you Metallica fans know Metal Massacre 1 was the one that introduced everybody to Metallica. What's important about Metal Massacre 3 is it introduced the world to this band. Not Bitch, not Warlord, not Tyrant, but... Slayer, rest in peace, um, Jeff Hanneman. Slayer, one of the, God, I mean, it, it's pretty basic to say one of the best metal bands of all time. I mean, that's that's just stupid that you even have to say that anymore. It kind of just goes without saying. This was the first widely circulated Slayer song, Aggressive Perfector. You know, I have you down on your knees. You play this fatal game. I satisfy your every need, you'll never be the same. If it wasn't for this, I mean, we wouldn't have some of the the most amazing music in metal ever created. Um, now, I'm not going to spend all day talking about Slayer, of course. Um, some of the other bands on here, yeah, whatever, they're not very good. Bitch, uh, <laughs> I can't lie, man. I used to be a fan of Bitch, um, the, the female-led metal band, um, Miss Betsy. The running in the dark, driving in rain. I'm sure if I listened to it now, I'd probably think it was horrible. Virgin Steel, people should know them. Uh, Sexist, who the fuck is that? Snow White, uh, Marauder. Now everybody, you hardcore kids know Marauder. Um, Black Widow. You know, the rest of this shit is just kind of like bullshit, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's just typical 80s thrash, but... It's really cool to have this, um, just because of the Slayer track, so, yeah, that's Metal Massacre 3. That's it, y'all. You know how we do in these streets, man. Peace, bitches.